If you're a complete beginner wanting to learn Wi-Fi hacking, you're in the right place. I'll show you exactly how to use Airgeddon step-by-step. No prior experience needed. By the end of this video, you'll master techniques that professionals use. We'll start with the basics and build up to advanced methods. Everything you see works on Kali Linux, Parrot OS, or any Linux system. If you skip this video, you might miss a lot of important information. And because of that, you may not get the results you're looking for. Let's start with installation. First, plug in a Wi-Fi adapter for testing. Use one that gets a strong, reliable response. If you're testing Linux or Parrot OS through a virtual machine on Windows, just open Device Manager and disable the adapter in Windows. That way, it's only connected to your virtual machine. When you disable the adapter in Windows, Windows won't be able to use it, but the VM gets exclusive access. That makes monitor mode and packet injection run much smoother. Note the host won't get internet through that adapter, and you need USB or PCI pass-through plus the correct drivers in the VM for everything to work. This video is for educational purposes only. I am not responsible for any misuse or illegal activities. For learning purposes, be sure to only test on networks you own. Next, open Linux, Parrot, or Ubuntu in any virtual machine like VirtualBox or VMware. I prefer VMware because it makes selecting the adapter much easier. I'll also show Kali Linux, so you'll see how to do this on a Linux system too. Now disconnect the network connection from your virtual OS because it's currently using your main OS's internet connection. In VMware, just click VM in the menu bar, head over to Removable Devices, and connect your Wi-Fi adapter so your virtual OS can use it. As you can see, the adapter is successfully connected. If we click on the Wi-Fi, you'll notice it's connected to a network name, No Signal. Now we'll go into Available Networks and locate our target SSID, Shield Spectrum. This demo is performed on my personal test network. I will not attempt to access anyone else's Wi-Fi. I'll explain common attacker techniques at a high level and then cover practical steps you can take to secure your network. We'll be running as root a lot, so I'll just go ahead and do sudo su to stay root for the session. Run apt update. What this command does is refresh your system's package list. Basically, it checks for the latest versions of all available packages. Type the command iwconfig. This command lets you view and configure wireless network interfaces in Linux. Just like if config works for wired connections, here you can see my wireless adapter named WLX7 CC2C6195BAF, and my virtual OS is connected to the Wi Fi called No Signal. In Kali Linux, it usually shows up as WLAN0, so on Linux, you'll see that name instead. Now type command airman ng check kill. What this does is stop background processes and services that can interfere when you set a wireless adapter to monitor mode. Note, your VM will lose internet access while these services are disabled. That's normal and required for this test. Next, type airmon ng start adapter name. Parrot OS often lists adapters as WLX, etc., while Kali will show WLAN0. That command switches your wireless adapter into monitor mode so it can capture Wi-Fi traffic for analysis. Next, type Airgeddon. On Parrot OS, it comes pre-installed, so you don't need to install anything extra to run it. Press Enter. Airgeddon will scan to see if all necessary tools are installed. If it finds any missing components, choose Continue, and it will install everything automatically. You'll see ENs33 and your connected wireless adapter listed. Press 2 on the keyboard and hit Enter. Press Enter again to continue. Here, each option can be used for different types of attacks or testing methods. But we'll go with the handshake capture method. It's simple, fast, and effective. The other options also work, but they usually take more time. Press 5 on your keyboard, then hit Enter to continue. Monitor mode is active. From here, I'll choose option 5 to attempt PMKID and 6 to handshake captures. First, we'll try the PMKID method. Press 5 and continue. Now press Enter to continue. The tool will begin scanning and capturing nearby networks for analysis. You can see Shield Spectrum and no signal. Our target network is Shield Spectrum. When you find the target network, press Ctrl plus C to stop the capture. That will bring up a list of the networks we've captured so far. As a recap, Shield Spectrum is our target network, while no signal is the network currently connected to our virtual machine. For the target network, press 3 and hit Enter, then Enter again to continue. Remaining options, just press enter. 
we'll see the interface for capturing PMK ID. I set the default time to 15 seconds. If it finds the network within that time, it'll show success. If not, try again with 100 seconds. It didn't find anything in 15 seconds. Timeout. The router isn't vulnerable, so the PM kid capture failed. Hit enter to move to the next step. We're going to try a handshake capture. Type six and press enter. Select attack option one for the handshake attack. Press one and hit enter. You can set the time here too, but I'm keeping the default. Just enter to continue. MDK4, AMOC attack and handshake capture attack have been initiated. This will capture the handshake. It will forcefully disconnect any device currently connected to the target router and force it to reconnect. The handshake will be captured during that moment. You do not need to do anything for this. It will happen automatically. However, there must be at least one device connected to the target route. Our handshake capture completed successfully. I kept the default save location, so the file is stored there. Press enter to proceed. Select zero to return to the main menu. From there, we'll use the captured handshake to attempt to find the Wi-Fi password. Press six to open the decrypt menu, enter. Home networks are personal, so we'll select one. There are several options here for finding the password in different ways. The best one is option two, although it takes a very long time. However, I'm going to use option three with a word list because it's a bit faster. I'll type three and press enter. Here, it's asking if I want to use the handshake file from where it's currently saved in this session. I'll say yes. Why? The BSS ID is already present, so I'll type Y for yes again. Here's the path to the dictionary file, the word list. Lots of passwords show up in word lists, so if you use a common password, it's easy to find. All right, I just copied and pasted the word list path right here. You'll type the full path ending with the name of your word list. I saved this word list as rockyu.txt. The main rockyu.txt file is very large and contains many, many passwords. I'm doing this using a word list of leaked passwords. Data breaches happen constantly, and these breaches often contain many passwords. We need to find and extract these. So for password cracking, you definitely need to try good password word lists. Common passwords are much easier to find. Do not press any keys on the keyboard or press Ctrl plus C during the process. This will terminate the entire process. Keep looking at the screen. You will be able to see at what speed Hashcat is working and how many passwords it has. Find. Successfully retrieved your network's password. Look at the status line in the Hashcat output. It shows that the password has been found. This means the password was successfully found. Press Enter to continue. It asks for permission to save the captured password. I pressed Y, checked the save path and file name, copied the path, then accepted the default by hitting enter. Password isn't displayed directly on the screen, but Hashcat has saved it to a file. Let's check if the password we found is actually correct by opening another terminal. I'm giving it root permissions because it was saved in the root directory. I copied the save path, typed cat plus the path, and pressed enter to view the file. Here it's showing the password of our target network and this is the password. Password for the Shield Spectrum network is Shield Test 420 at number sign percent ampersand. This proves how vulnerable your network is to a simple dictionary attack. Even though the password seems complex, it was found in a small word list, meaning it's a common or leaked password. This entire process has shown you how easily an attacker could gain access to your network. How to improve your network security Strong password WPA3 more secure than WPA2. Update firmware disable WPS firewall. Enable consider hiding your SSIDMAC. Filtering use a separate guest network for visitors. Regular checks. Teach users about phishing and safe browsing habits. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and like. Let me know in the comments what topics you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching.